Hi class, good day. This is Anne Marjorie Alinton and together with the group, we will gonna talk about the principles of art. So, what are the principles of art? Well, principle of art is a represent of how the artist use the elements of art to create an effect and to help convey the artist's intent. The principles of art and design are balance, contrast, emphasis, movement, pattern, rhythm, and variety. The use of these principles can help determine whether a painting is successful or whether an artwork is finished. So now, let's proceed to the one principle of art, which is rhythm. So, what is rhythm? Well, rhythm is one of the principles of art which denotes movement by using repeated visual art elements to create a feeling of motion and the artwork. Unlike the other principles, rhythm is a principle of art to be felt and understood and it is a bit complex to explain. In music, rhythm is combination of strong beats and weak beats and it is no different in a word of art. Rhythm in art refers to using repeated elements of art makes a mood or a flow of a specific artwork. So what is the definition of rhythm in art? Well, rhythm is one of the art principles to create a movement or pattern. Using one or more art elements like line, color, texture, space, shape, form, and volume, it, it guides the viewer's eye from one part of the other artwork to another. So, how is rhythm created in art? When we think of rhythm, it is a repeated pattern of sound or movement. Take note for the repeated pattern. You can dance to create a rhythm. You can play music or beat a regular intervals and create a rhythm. Art is a stationary work without any movements. And how can rhythm be created in art? An artist creates a sense of rhythm using one or more elements of art by repeating patterns. So an artist creates a sense of rhythm using one or more elements of art by repeating patterns in the art space. Just like how a musician does, when, when we see the art, our eyes move from one element to another in the art space precisely like the beat of the music so why is rhythm important in art the most obvious reason is that it can help create a sense of movement and energy in a work of art rhythm can create a sense of unity or cohesions within a composition and draw attention to certain elements within the work as we all know that art is all about feelings and rhythm is the only principle of art that has potential to create an emotion by itself. Unlike music or motion pictures, art is static. Creating a picture using a combination of elements to make a viewer appreciate the image and make them go through the entire piece from one place to another is especially important. So, rhythm is important in a piece of art. So, let's now proceed to the principles of art rhythm. There are five different types of rhythm in art. So, what are there? First, the regular rhythm. Next, alternating rhythm, flowing rhythm, fourth, progressive rhythm, and lastly, the random rhythm. So, what is regular rhythm? A regular rhythm in art is the repetition of the motif in a composition that is arranged evenly in a specific order and it is easily identifiable. And uh, let's say for an example, a regular rhythm in the physical world is a tick-tock of a clock. 
that keeps repeating. Creating a regular rhythm in art is simple. You can create horizontal lines and equal intervals with the same color, intensity, and texture, and it is a regular rhythm. So, just like the picture of this one. Okay, so advantage of a regular rhythm, um, it is only plain, simple, and easy to create. The rhythm is predictable and consistent and gives a calmness to the art. Next, let's now proceed to alternating rhythm. Okay, well, alternating rhythm is using more than one motif or element repeatedly. It is a composition creates alternating rhythm from the word alternate. It is from one to another. So there is no difference between a regular rhythm and alternating rhythm. And the only difference being in alternating rhythm is that more than or one variable is added to create a, a wider variety. Just like in an artist. An artist can use alternating colors, shapes, forms in repetition to create an alternating rhythm. For example, in a chess, a chess board, there is a black and black and white repeated co a repetition color in, in for the if you can see a chess board. So there is a square black, white, black, white, and then it creates a uh, appealing appealing pattern right in the in the picture just like this so advantages of an al alternating rhythm is that alternating rhythm reduce monetary by creating a multiple motifs in the work it creates a curiosity in the eyes of the viewer to study the intricacy of the artwork Alternating rhythm gives a variety to the artwork, making the pot, the painting more attractive. Artwork identify the rhythm in it. Next, flowing rhythm. So, what is the definition of flowing rhythm in art? Well, flowing rhythm it is in in art is where the art elements are in the form of curves, circles, or Adulating and are smooth, smooth in art movement and are repetitions. It directs the viewer's eye like a wave, up and down or left and right. Sometimes in a circle, mostly flowing rhythms are found in nature and organic shape of form. So just like this, this is my the most favorite um, principle of rhythm, the the flowing rhythm. So it is just, for example, the great wave of Kanagawa. Uh, this is the example of flowing rhythm. So what are the advantages of a flowing rhythm? Well, the flowing rhythm is pleasing and smooth for the viewer's eye. Just like how can I see it to the example of the art of flowing rhythm. Even though the colors are vibrant. And also it gives an artwork a precise movement and makes the painting more interesting. Okay. So now proceed to progressive rhythm. What is the de definition of progressive rhythm in art? So if the artist has used repetition of shape, form, or color changes gradually or progressively in an artwork, it is called progressive rhythm in art. You can do this rhythm in art by changing one character or a motif at its, at its repeats and shows progress. It moves the viewer's eye in the direction of the progress. The elements make either in shape, 
form or color, most of the progressive rhythms are man-made. So an example of progressive rhythm is motion pictures, where the frames in films move gradually or pro. Next is the paint of Vincent van Gogh from nine from 1590. It is called the undergrowth with two figures. Undergrowth with two figures. It is an oil on canvas painting reflecting landscape and trees perpendicularly as columns. The tree's trunk is rhythmic and the width of the tree trunk is depreciating progressively. The painting covers trees, meadows, flowers, and leaves filled with different colors and it is an excellent example of progressive rhythm. So what are the benefits when you are making progressive rhythm of art? Well, the progress gives the progressive rhythm gives a sense of natural or secured feeling. The, this progressive rhythm gives a sense of prediction with a progressive variable attached to it. Though rhythm creates monotony, progressive rhythm reduces it. So now let's proceed to the random rhythm. So what is random rhythm in art mean? So random rhythm in art is when the art elements repeat without any specific condition, order, or arrangement. It is an example of random rhythm like a splashing of colors and the impression of resulting from the splash is random. It is like free for free form of art. There's no there's no um rules, there's no arrangement or order that needs to be followed. Just like picture example. So what are the benefits of random rhythm? Random rhythm gives an artist freedom of expression but without any order or arrangement. Well, what are the benefits of random rhythm? Well, random rhythm, it gives the artist a freedom of expression but without any order or arrangements. It also gives the viewer unpredictable movement around the artwork. The artwork, the artwork created using random rhythm will be pleasing as it is rhythmic, rhythmic and more to study as the rhythms are random. So that's it for the principles of rhythm. So to sum it up, uh, let me conclude what we are talking about. Um, any element like color, line, shape, or form creates a rhythm. The intensity of the rhythm can be a various level from subtle to high, making it stand, making it stand out. Well, guys, next time you see an art, when you see an artwork, try to find the rhythm. What do you see in the painting? So, how do elements guide you to move from one part to another? Also, try to identify the type of rhythms in the artist has to use. A clean visual rhythm will guide you to from one place to another and it's predictable it leads to anticipation. Different rhythms add variety of the artwork. And, and in every artwork has in has its rhythm. Some will be visible and it is often how viewer interprets it. So that's it. And now let's proceed to the other Principle of Art Hi, my name is Ivan Baino from BSED Major in Science and today we will be talking about Principles of Art which is Balance. So before we continue, let us um, determine what is balance. Balance is the distribution of the visual weight of object, colors, texture, and space. If the design was a scale, this element should be balanced to make a design feel stable. So next one, what is balance in art? Balance is part of the principles of art, art, which are also referred to as design principles, 
These are namely emphasis, movement, rhythm, proportion, scale, harmony, um, unity, variety, and contrast. If you are not familiar with the principles of art, these act as guidelines or rules, so to say, that assist in composing an artwork into an uh, identifiable format. So, what is the importance of balance in art? Artists generally strive to create artwork that is balanced. A balanced work in which the visual weight is distributed, distributed evenly across the composition seems stable, makes the viewer feel comfortable, and is pleasing to the eye. A work that is unbalanced, appears unstable, creates tension, and makes the viewer uneasy. So, there are three kinds of balance in art. The first one is the symmetrical, second is asymmetrical, and the last one is the radial. There are usually several types of techniques available in each of the principles of art. These can be utilized in a myriad of ways to apply the principles more diversely. But therefore, when it comes to balance in art, while there are three primary types of techniques we can use, some art sources mention four, but we will discuss the three major types of balance in art. So, the first type of balance is the symmetrical balance. What is the symmetrical balance? Symmetrical balance is also term formal balance in art, which means that there is an equal balance between both halves of the visual composition and the image are identical to each other. This type of balance in art also includes a mirroring of halves, which is referred to as inverted symmetry. The composition's halves are separated by the midline, or are the otherwise referred to as the central axis, and also this can be divided into horizontal, vertical, or diagonal sections. Therefore, if the composition of separated horizontally, the top and bottom halves would mirror one another. And also similarly, um, with vertical separation, the left and right halves would mirror one another. Though symmetrical parts of an art composition are usually identical, this can also differ in slight variations, which is referred to as approximate symmetry. This is when the parts of both halves do not share the same identical or mirroring qualities, although the shapes or size may still be similar. Symmetrical balance can also occur by, by actually or by actually, okay, which means that the composition is balanced vertically and horizontally. The OP artist Victor Vasarly is famous for utilizing this type of symmetry in his artwork. For example, his Vega Noir 1969 depicts the symmetrical balance of a spherical object on the midline. So, the second um, types of balance is the symmetrical. A symmetrical balance is also called informal balance on the other hand. It refers to both halves of the composition retaining a sense of balance, but with different art elements on each side, in other words, um, both sides have visual weight that complements one another to make it almost symmetrical. The art elements arranged on each side of the composition will range between different colors, forms, shapes, and texture, and also spaces. For example, one half can appear black and the other half is white. Or one shape can be larger than the other shape or shorter or longer. A symmetrical balance in art is also described as being more subjective compared to symmetrical balance because it requires and involves closer planning to achieve the visual weight on each side of the composition, yet it remains diverse. A symmetrical balance in art examples includes the Vincent van Gogh, The Starry Night, 1889, which depicts a tree filling the left hand side and an emptier right hand side with only um, the moon and stars in the midnight. Um, the placement of these objects creates an overall balance effect here. The one side is darker and heavier in shape than the other side's lighter and smaller shapes thus playing off one another. So, the last type of balance is the radial balance. Uh, what is radial balance? According to the dictionary, the term radial means developing uniformly around a certain axis or it is relating to a place like or moving along a radius. A radius is a line from the center of a circular shape or form, like a circular sphere, to its outer edge or circumference. The word um, radius originates from Latin and it means ray or spoke. So, common radial balance in art examples includes mandalas of 
which there are hundreds of different designs and patterns as well as rose windows from Mary Gothic cathedrals throughout Europe. For example, the Reims Cathedral, Notre Dame, or Notre Dame, and Chartres Cathedral, all located in France, among many others. So I think that's all for today, and thank you for listening to my report about the um, principle of art um, based on balance. And I hope you learn something in this um, video presentation, and have a nice day. Good afternoon everyone, I'm Gay Ann Bagayas, and now I'm going to discuss the emphasis and proportion, which are one of the principles of art. So what is emphasis? Emphasis in design means bring more attention to a particular part of a visual composition, while contrast is the difference between two or more objects in a design. Also, the difference in objects could be light and dark, thin and thick, small, large, bright and dull. An emphasis by contrast creates a contrast between surrounding of objects and the element helps create emphasis on that element. For example, the principle of creating a centered interest in an artwork often achieved by color contrast and by lines which direct the eye to it. Try to look at these pictures and you can see the focal point of the elements that use principle of emphasis. And through emphasis contrast, when artists and designers draw attention to part of a composition by making it one way, to do this is by using a color place against a complementary background color, like warm colors jump out against cooler colors. Also, emphasis in art refers to the principle of creating a focal point to make a certain element that stand out. And artists use many techniques to create emphasis, and some artists become famous for the specific methods they use. What is proportion? Proportion in art is the relationship in terms of size between one shape or form when compared with another shape or form in the art space. It refers to the dimensions of the composition and relationships between height, width, and depth. And how proportion is used will affect how realistic or stylish something seems, like how the sizes of different parts of a piece of art or design relate to each other. Alternatively, um, artists can use proportion for effect. By manipulating proportion, the artist can make his or her subject seem strong, weak, funny, or mysterious. And now look at this example pictures that you can see the use of proportion of every element, forms, or shapes. It differentiates with the sizes that will make an art more realistic. Good proportion adds harmony and symmetry or balance among the parts of a design as a whole. And when principle of proportion is applied to a work of art, it is usually in a relationship of size. And this is the ratio of the size of one element in a composition to the size of another related component. So why proportion is important to arts? Proportion is largely about the relationship of the size of one element when compared to another. So when drawing or painting realistically, proportion is important. So if the proportions are incorrect, then the resulting image will look less realistic or abstracted. Alternatively, artists can use proportion for effect. As artists, we can choose to use color or not. We can choose to use emphasis or not. There is, however, no escaping proportion, so one simply cannot leave it out. Proportion is a important tool for the artist. With accurate proportion, we can create drawings and paintings that are realistic. And by manipulating proportion, we can emphasize elements and communicate ideas. So proportion is a powerful principle that should be understood by every artist. Hello, good morning. So in this video, I'm going to talk about two of other principles of arts, which is the gradation and harmony. Now, what is gradation? Gradation is a painting or drawing technique in which there is a gradual change from one color or tone to another color and tone. Gradation is used in drawings to create forms that appear three-dimensional. Examples of gradation is when light colors changes gradually into dark, bigger becomes smaller, and one color changes into another. Now, let's have this first example. Um, at first thought, you will say that this is just a normal painting of a grass, but 
try to squint your eyes and focus on the colors and probably you might discover that there's a gradation in the color or the value of the painting. Now as you squint your eyes, try to look at the bottom part. Let's let's begin with the bottom part first. Now, you will see that there's a blue-green kind of color and then it transitions from a shade of green or darker green and then becomes a lighter shade of green and then into yellow-green and then it transitions again into yellow and then at the last color you will see is orange-like color. Now this is the gradation in this painting. As I've said earlier that um, gradation can come into um, one color into another or it transitions from one color to another tone or color. Now colors are not the only thing that is gradated in this painting because there's more. Now let's start on the bottom part again. In the bottom part, you will see that the strokes of the painting is way more larger and longer. But if you try to analyze the, the whole painting as it goes up, you will see that the strokes became smaller and smaller. That is the gradation there. The, the strokes of the painting from the bottom part started with a larger and longer um, sizes. But as it goes up, this kind of details become smaller and smaller. Now on this next example, we have this painting of lines of horses, there's children and other people on the street. Now what I want you to focus in this particular painting is the lines of the horses where the gradation is being applied. Now if you try to see the lines of the horses, you will see that it started from a white colored horse. Now as these lines of horses becomes more farther, the color of the horses becomes more darker and darker. It started from a white color next to a, a light brown and then to a way more darker brown and then to more darker and darker. Alongside with the colors, the sizes of the horses is gradated as well. As the images of the horses goes farther, its sizes becomes more smaller and smaller. What is harmony? Harmony is the visually satisfying effect of combining similar or related elements. It is the sense of cohesiveness in between the elements in a composition. The element doesn't need to be exactly the same or completely different, but at least to be related in some ways. Color palettes or similar texture can create a sense of unity between different components. Overall, harmony is achieved when an element of an artwork come together in a unified way. Certain elements can be repeated yet they still look and feel like they are lending themselves as a whole. Harmony is definitely not a monotony, but also it is not chaos, but instead it is a perfect pair or match of both. Good day, I'm John Brian Leopoldo and today I'll be tackling about the principles of art of variety and movement. The principle of variety. What is variety? According to Google, variety is how artists and designers add complexity to their work using visual elements to make it look interesting. So it will not look bland nor meh. So here is an example of an artwork sketch made by Daniel Buskin. This sketch consists of a variety of weight and lines. As you can see, in this art have thick, heavy stroke of lines while where it emphasizes the silhouette of the subject, making the subject appear and pop. And also you can see thin and light strokes of line that insinuates depth and detail. And by doing this variety of lines, it makes the art pop and looks more interesting. Without the variety, it would still do look nice but it looks bland and lacks complexity. Another example is this artwork with variety of colors. As you can see in this artwork made by Dimitar Dimitrov that I found on Pinterest, the art itself do really looks interesting and amusing of how the variety of basic colors in the spectrum is putted and gives a very amusing and interesting look. But also remember, if this principle of art is added heavily, it will also cause a very scrambled and kind of ruined art. You need to find the right spot to balance the variety so it still look good and dynamic without overdoing it. Next is the principle of movement. According to Google, movement is the path the viewer eye takes through the work of art often to focal areas. So here is an example of art with a great movement. 
It is the Great Wave of Kanagawa by Hokusai. As you can see, when you take a look, the curl of the wave catches your attentions first because this art guides your eyes in a flow and it made the artwork calming and not too distracting to look at. Another example also here is a manga page of a known anime called Jujutsu Kaisen. As you can see how the characters are put in a position with their gesture that guides your eye to where panel or illustration next you need to look at. And through this, it gives an interesting flow to look at like how his arms spread up with impact lines to insinuate that his hand moved from this point to that point. With an intent, then your eyes flow next to the expression of the other character reaction then flows to the impact panel with some sort of something implodes. Another example is an artwork named Red Puppy by Ina that I found in the internet. Look at this artwork and observe how the visual elements are putted and guides your eyes. How the red puppy flowers are aligned, partnered with some sort of white flowers guiding your eyes to look at it from near far up to the horizon. And that is a great example of movement. That is all, thank you. Hello everyone, this discussion will focus more on understanding the principles of art. This will help us understand the principles of art and give us ideas about how we can spot these principles in artworks. The principles of art allows us to place some kind of objective reasoning behind why a great painting is great. This is important as it keeps us from falling into a vague space where art is no longer able to be defined or critic. Understanding and appreciating the fundamentals of art is often what this entails. First and foremost, one must use at least some of them in order to make an art. Second, by understanding the components and rules of art, we can analyze what an artist has created, characterize their work, and express our ideas and conclusions in a language that is universal. The fundamental guidelines that describe how the visual components of a piece of art are structured are known as the principles of art or the principles of design. These guidelines may be the closest thing we have to a set of impartial standards for evaluating and assessing art. It is vital to clarify that these are not to be confused with the elements of art which are referred to as the visual tools that make up an artwork. These also serve as standards for evaluating artwork. Now, an artist organizes elements into a piece of art using these principles of art, namely rhythm, balance, emphasis, proportion, contrast, gradation, harmony, variety, and movement. Applying the principles of art entails using the line, shape, or form, space, value, color, and texture elements of art and design to create the composition as a whole. When looking at or making a painting, it is crucial to comprehend these. Visual artist tools are the principles of art and design. We now understand that the fundamentals of art describe how an artist employs its components to produce a desired result and communicate his or her intention. Artistic principles are crucial because they enable us to comprehend and value the beauty that exists in the world. These ideas are employed by artists to produce stunning works of art that may encourage us to express ourselves more freely. We may fully appreciate artworks and the creative process by knowing how these aspects and principles interact.